your daughter i don't even know if it's public or you say she just got engaged she did yeah, yeah. So, you know she got engaged when i was in vegas um this weekend i was in vegas i worked vegas this weekend and we got there my wife why well, my wife came with me because and she never comes but we because we were flying here to do the movie stuff from vegas so she came to vegas and we got there and uh, an hour later my daughter sent a picture of her with the ring on and I said I'm in Vegas for an hour I'm already down 500,000 <laughs> <laughs> What is the thing that keeps you doing stand up? Keeps you like challenging yourself? Like, wh like where? Because like, you don't have to. Well, I don't have to financially. I definitely, you know. Yeah, I, 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 that's I'm why I brought lucky. you here today. I want I'm to borrow, lucky. I want to yeah. some money. Yeah. I'm not doing this for the money. <laughs> yeah, um, I do this for the steps to get the steps in. Yeah, <laughs> third floor. Yeah, um, but. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to not be bored, you know, and I want to not be, I want to, I, I, it's scary, but to quote, I've been quoting Lionel Richie all day, all week, because <laughs> he says on American Idol, he says to the singers, uh, life begins at the end of your comfort zone, oh. you know, um, so, you know, just signing on to, to direct this was the scariest thing. But uh, it was that kind of philosophy. Life it's, begins at the end of your comfort zone is a fantastic quote. <laughs> yes. I don't know if it's with Lionel, if it's his quote, but he does say it a lot. And uh, and I get it. But, um, I, you know, I, I, everyone, I, I, occasionally people tell me, why, why aren't you retired? And just blah, 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 blah. <laughs> because I don't do it for the money. I do, yeah. Uh, I, I have to do it. I, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, it, may, it, it keeps me going. It gets me up in the morning. Um, I like to create and I like to, um, I get the, I get the high from it. Uh, and some, to quote another director, uh, I'm not going to say his name, <laughs> but they asked him, why do you make a movie? So many movies. Yeah. Why do you do it? And he said, because it keeps me from thinking of death. <laughs> oh my gosh yes of course a little morbid but uh that's really funny yeah <clears throat> and of course when when you and i are at the cellar all we talk about is our health i know it's like yeah. it's like that every day every other conversation is you being like what's your cholesterol look like these days? that's so funny I, <laughs> what's, I, I did a i did a i did marin yeah yeah yeah, marin. yeah. You know, he's closer to my age than you are yeah and and the first twenty minutes was just A one C. Yeah, yeah. Help. What's your A one C? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, you really like recently. You said to me with a, a degree of certainty that someone who isn't a doctor, I don't think, has ever had to me. You were like, you should get on statins. You were like, I wish I had gotten on statins. Well, fifteen you know, years. Ago. I can say this now because I said it on Marin. That I had a, I had a, did I talk to you? Yeah, about? yeah, I yeah, had you stent. had a stent, I had a you stent. had a stent, yeah. Right. Which I'm, mean it, for people who don't realize, it means you didn't have a heart attack. No, no. But you had a blockage. The, the weird thing is I said it on my marrow and I just said I had a stent. And to, right now today, if you Google, I'm Googling. Yourself. My, I'm Googling myself because my movie's coming out and I want to <laughs> read the reviews. But every, I'm, I'm not kidding. I want to show you something. I want to show you something. <laughs> This is ridiculous. Can you Google Ray Romano and go to news? And you will see okay. the top 10 things are Ray Romano heart surgery. That's so funny. It's all clickbait because it's not, I didn't really have heart surgery. And it was two and a half years ago. No, was, you couldn't be, you couldn't be getting better reviews for your <laughs> surgery. I mean, the reviews for the surgery are through well, the Well, what's roof. funny is, what's good is if they click on it. They'll say he, he was on Marin promoting his movie. So my movie gets the plug anyway. You got 90% on, uh, on, on Rotten Surgeries. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah. Your, show, your movie is, by the way, like 97% on Rotten Tomatoes, which I was glad about because I actually feel like I saw the movie without reading a review. I had a super emotional reaction. I was crying, yeah. crying. Jenny did too. I'll tell you yeah. what's great about seeing a, seeing a movie in a theater because yes. we were... We were at the the Metro Graph. Graph yeah. We were at the Metro Graph. People cry around you. You're crying. Yes. You, can, you can hear people sniffling. You gotta see it in a it's theater. It's a human connection. Yes, it's a communal experience. 
And this is why I forget about my movie. I just want theaters to exist and I want people to go yeah. just for that reason you're saying. Yeah. Even the laughter when you, you know, crying. The laughter too. Hearing people cry and seeing people get emotional. Yeah. That's okay. But then the laughter, there's nothing better. And, um, you know, for a comedy, yeah, okay, I want people to watch the movie, but watching it in your living room and not having the soundtrack of the audience. Yeah. Because when, when people laugh, that's like, it's like watching a, an action film without a soundtrack. You know yeah. what I mean? If you're watching a comedy in a, in a, by yourself on a couch, I mean, you can still enjoy it. But, and, and then that's that, it's that bond of these are strangers and we're all kind of uh, um, feeling the same thing, you know, the, uh, different ways, but yeah. Well, I had the thing, the thing that crushed me, and it's, it's funny because you were saying the other night, I was like, you, your movie made me cry, and you were like, you know, my show, Old Man in the Pool, made you cry. And I think, I was thinking about that later, I was like, oh, well, we both have dad stuff. Because my, in yeah. my show, I talk about how my dad doesn't say I love you. Yes. And in this movie, there's like a dad who withholds love yeah. in some way, yeah, shape, or form. Yeah, you can't say it, yeah. 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 But Which, that's what that's killed- That's my life, too. That's what killed me. I always have the line, uh, if my father hugged me once, I wouldn't have to do any of this shit. <laughs> yeah. One, yeah, one hug. <laughs> one hug. That's all it would have took. I did, s- did he ever say I love you before he died? He did not, and he, um, listen, I don't, I, I don't, uh, I, I uh, my father's f- father left him when he was two years old, so he had his my father had his own thing. You yeah. Know? So I don't I, I don't fault him for being who he was. You know he yeah. just, he tried and he, he couldn't. But I remember um, towards the end when we kind of knew it, he was okay, but it, it, he was close to. You know, uh, probably in the next year, we wouldn't have him with us anymore. Yeah. And I remember he was in the hospital here, and I was living in L.A., so the times I would come in, whatever. And when I left, you never knew if I was going to see him again. Yeah. <clears throat> and I left <clears throat> the hospital one time, and I was going back to L.A., and I go, all right, Dad, I'm going to L.A. Said, all right. And, and I never, you know, hard, had a hard time saying it to him because, you know, we never – said it to each other yeah and i you know of course at that moment i i wanted to say it so i said all right, i'm going to like uh, uh, all right i love you dad and his response was i know you do oh my god and that, that was it I can't, yeah i can't take it i can't take it <laughs> i know you do i know you do yeah. oh my god and i don't know if that was his way of saying it or if it was uh my sister gina sent me this as today much as he could say this is my most- dad's family in queens when he was growing up, he's the kid. He's the boy. Wait a minute, lower which left. boy? Lower oh, left. he's the little yeah, boy he's there. A little boy, yeah. Oh, it's my wow. dad in Queens. Somewhere. Wow, the some... mother, uh, the one who's on, who's uh, who's behind him? Is that I think his it's mother? his mom? Yeah. She looks like a a, a, a member of my family. <laughs> that's they all do. That's somewhere in Queens. That's my somewhere in Queens. So you're Italian. I'm Italian, too. Sicilian. Oh, you know my wife. That's wrong. Yeah. Wife. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. The they, the looks and the dresses, the black yeah. dress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's wild. Yeah, uh-huh. the uh, yeah, it's it's uh, but yeah, the the with the withholding. Where were you in Queens? Where were you? They were in. Uh-huh. I want to say they were near Flushing, it, it, Flushing or maybe yeah. Queens Village. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, Gina goes. You're from Queen. You're from Queens Village. That's what she no, said. No, far still. Oh, no, I think Queens Village. You think I'm from Queens Village? No, no, no. I think <laughs> my sister my sister saying. Um you, you can't you can't have this <laughs> argument with me. I know. Oh, I know Queen, where I, I Queens know where I Boulevard in Queens from nineteen forty six. This oh, is Queens, the photo. Yeah. Yeah, so it could be there's a number of towns it could have been if it's Queens Boulevard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But uh do you do you have other members of the family who are emotional who say I love you? I have my younger brother probably. Yeah. My younger brother, me and my my brother and I are a year and a half apart. So we had the same uh you know the the, the same era of my father. Yeah. My younger brother's 7 years younger. Yeah. So he softened up a little. Still didn't say it. Yeah. But wasn't as 
you know, we were we were kind of afraid of my dad when we were kids, you know. Yeah. And then when he became when he got older, he was he had a dry weird little sense of humor. Yeah. And he would he would we would laugh at him, but we would make him laugh, but like my wife uh, my wife um did not get him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. And, and um, I, my I, wife didn't get him is probably an understatement of, yeah. this, of the century. So he would, he um, found a way to play back our outgoing messages on our machine. Yeah. Okay. He found the code, you know, he could play our, when, when answering machines existed. Yeah. And he would call up, listen to our machine, and then he would leave a message and say, hey, Anna, you know, your friend Linda went to the doctor. Maybe you should go. All right, he would be. Fun. He thought he was being funny. Yeah, and my, and my wife was furious. She, you know, that's like reading our mail. Yeah, she, and she was. Uh, and this was just. We were just only married one year, two years. Yeah, you got to talk to him. I would tell him, Dad, I think it's funny. All right, <laughs> I'm going to give you your credit. <laughs> she doesn't think it's funny. Ah, come on. I go. Please tell me. All right, all right. And then he topped himself. He found a way to change our outgoing message. Yeah. Not the... He didn't listen to our messages. Yeah. He changed. So when instead When of, you call, yes, it's, and, it's yes. your dad. Instead right. of so, you right. exactly. saying, hey, so, it's Ray, so, leave a message. Right. It's right. your dad. So he wrote... And, and, my, and we called up once and, hey, you've reached Ray, Ray and Anna. Leave a message. If you want Al Romano, I'm at two six eight two zero. Oh my god! <laughs> and my wife cried. She actually literally oh god. <laughs> cried. She was so mad. Is I put that in my book. I remember I'm writing oh that gosh. story in my book, and the way I finished it in my book was, and I want to thank my father because without him, I would have never heard my wife say the word <laughs> cocksucker. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Did your dad like that Peter Boyle play? Your Peter yeah. Boyle was a legend. Is a was a legendary actor. Yes, like some of the greatest like film and TV roles of all time. Yeah, yeah. he was a great man. He was just the kind of just the opposite of the guy on the TV show. Yeah, he was so smart. You know. Yeah. He, you know, John Lennon was the oh my be gosh, yeah. best man at his wedding. Yeah. You know? Did you know yeah, that? Yeah, I about did him? know that. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. yeah. And he was a he he was a, a monk who took a vow of silence at yes. one point, yeah. And um, so he could talk to me about the stupidest things, you know. And then he could argue politics with Patty Heaton. Um, wow! So he was all of that, yeah. He was when, really great. When you were making the series, because man, so many seasons, so many episodes. It's like, yeah. and after a certain point, first season, you're probably basing on your life. Probably season two, three on. It's what is it at that point? Whose life is it? It's the writers' room. Well, it's it's right. Like... Yeah, I mean everybody, everybody <laughs> in the writers' room was. They were all married with family except for one guy. Tom, okay. Tom, do you know Tom Caltabiano? Yeah, I don't know. of course. Yeah, yeah. Tom. Tom was the only single guy in the writers' room. So everybody brought. You know, Phil Rosenthal would come in and say what happened. Tell his stories. What, yeah. Yeah. Or well, he would ask the guys. On the weekend, go home and have a fight with your wife and bring it back in. Oh you know, God. yeah. <laughs> did um, it, did Anna ever object to anything on the show, where she, where she'll go? Actually, it happened this way, kind of thing. She would say once in a while. She would say, "I, I don't want to see this on the show." <laughs> oh my you know, gosh. yeah. And I, this is my stupid joke, and I would tell her to. Uh, go cry on a bag of money. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, that's my Jesus. stupid. Joke. Yeah. Um, but uh, once in a while. But not in that way. One, one, one night we were sitting in bed watching, and there was a scene with me and Patty. And she watched the scene and she said, um, You've just talked to her in that scene more than you've talked to me the whole week. Oh my gosh. And I said, well, we have writers. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't have a writer for you. But, uh, <laughs> she never really got too bent about what what we do. And even in my act, you know, in my act, I'm worse than what was on the show. Yeah, you yeah. Know? You know, uh, constantly about you know, what thirty five years married, no sex, and all that stuff. You know, and and she does. A little bit now. Oh, now I got to go listen to you say, uh, oh you know, God. I got the, 
I have the stupid joke of um, when we have sex now, my wife has to take off her Apple Watch because it keeps going, time to move. <laughs> right. I got to hear how, to, how bad I am at sex now, whatever, you know. But she never really follows through. It's always just, yeah. she's just voicing it, but she knows it's it's part of the deal. <laughs> you Not were... the deal, but it's it's harmless, really. You, know? you have such a sweet family. I met I met Anna. I met Allie. It was all yeah. at the comedy teller. It's really yes. sweet. Yes. Did you meet Did you meet the boys? I think I met the boys too. Yeah. I think you had a whole family when I. Yeah. Your daughter. I don't even know if it's public or you say she just got engaged. She did. Yeah. yeah. So, you know she got engaged when I was in Vegas. Um, this weekend I was in Vegas. I worked Vegas this weekend. And we got there. My wife, well, my wife came with me because, and she never comes, but we because we were flying here to do the movie stuff from Vegas. So she came to Vegas, and we got there. And uh, an hour later, my daughter sent a picture of her with the ring on, and I said, "I'm in Vegas for an hour. I'm already down five hundred thousand." But yeah, she's engaged, and and my son is engaged. My my uh, one oh, wow. of my, one of my twins got engaged, so we have two ready. I'm I'm ready to be a, a grandfather. I want a kid. Does it feel like your kids getting engaged? Does it feel like a uh, like a stage, like a next a next step in your life? Yeah, it's like you know I I I, I have friends like I I'm you know I'm in a different age than you. Um, um, you're not going to hit that grandpa age yet, you know. Yeah. But my friends are, are kids are having kids. Yeah. And it, I'm looking forward to it, you yeah. know. And yeah, I want I I I I want to move on into that stage. And yeah. Quickly before I want to be able to bend down and pick them up. You know. I get uh, that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, I always say this to you at the cellar. I always says you, there's not that many comedians who stay funny over 60 you know you're 65 <laughs> it's like and yeah. well because i think about it all the time because sometimes i go like i don't know well maybe yeah. i know what you're saying maybe but, yeah. you know maybe i won't do stand up in my 50s maybe i'll direct movies yeah. or this or that or maybe i'll do something else because i i have that fear yeah that what if i'm not funny at a certain age you're a riot it's like do yeah. you think there's secrets to it like what kept you like know. you're like the I mean everybody says it who knows you you're the most down to earth person you, you meanwhile you're a huge I star I mean I don't know what the formula is for that you know I know what you're talking about um and I and and I don't even know if I you know I always worry am I going to outgrow stand up yeah uh, of course you're you know, your audience can also come with you, you know. Do, uh, well, what it is, I guess, is will I a be able to play for the same ages, of the audiences that go to the comedy store, yeah. you know? Yeah, if I go do Vegas, people that are going to come to see me yeah. are going to be my audience, yeah. you know. But I want to go into a club and be able to go on stage. And I don't know. I don't know if it's a... I don't know what you know. There are there are comics o older who who I still hold up. Uh, you know, in your fifties now, it's nothing. I mean, oh yeah. I mean, you know, uh, Sebastian Maniscalco's in his fifties. Yeah, he's you know? a riot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Mark Maron's in his late fifties. Sandler, Sandler, and Kevin James are all in the fifties. So I think that's happening too. You know. Um, 50s and 60s is not as old as it yeah. used to be. Chris Rock is in his 50s. Late, yeah, they're yeah. all late 50s. Yeah. Spade, Spade, and everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what what makes it a style where you where it holds up? I, 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 you know, I don't know if it's having that conversational style. Maybe, yeah. Like if if someone was a a character act, <clears throat> yeah. Does that hold up over the test of time? I don't know. Probably not. Yeah, maybe, probably, maybe not. Probably not. Maybe not. Yeah. Well, because it's authentic to who you are, right? Like, like my favorite book on directing is Ilya Kazan on directing, yeah. and he, I'm paraphrasing, but he, but he says this thing that stuck with me, which is like, the directors who lose it with age are direct are trying to be hip and young, and right. they're not honest to what their age actually is. Right. 
And I, I think that's right. true of stand up. I think it's true of movies. Yeah, yeah. I never thought of it. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I wonder. I'm, I'm thinking about my. I, I don't consciously do that when I write stand up. You know. Yeah. I don't say, all right, uh, I've got to bring it up to date. I just, I just, I don't know how you write, but I. Yes, there are times where I'm like, all right, what's a? Let's think of something funny. But the majority of my act is either something funny pops in my head and I write it down, or my wife says something, I write it down. My yeah. kids say something, I write yeah, it yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I expand on it from there. Yeah. Um, but I don't, I don't sit down and say, time to write. Time, okay, let's yeah. think. Let's think. Time to write. No, I always tell that to people because a lot of creatives listen to the show, and I always say just like write everything down. Like yeah. Literally keep a journal. Just, write oh, it all yeah. down because it's all usually, I think, at least me and comedians I know, it's you write down things that happen, and then at some point, yeah, you go, oh, the punchline's this. Yes, yeah, I have the whole. I have it in my book. I, I longhand it, you know, and in the back of my book, my I have my big calendar. I like to. I like to. I have a hard copy calendar, you know, yeah. month at a glance. Yeah, and the the last th- four or five pages that are blank are new new bits, and I just have those buzzwords of the stupidest things. Yeah, yeah, whatever. And will they amount to a bit? Yeah. If I go, I mean, I don't know if they'll amount to it, but I have to take it on stage. And I, you know, in one week at the cellar, you can, I can kind of know if it's a bit or not because I can, yeah. I can get on stage fifteen times. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I don't have it. I don't even have a bit written out. I just have the word. Okay, this is called the slow round. What nicknames did you have in your life that were really good or really bad? I had um, Dizzy. Dizzy. That's nice. Is it a good one? That's positive, I think. Yeah. I had Dizzy. What's it based on? I forgot. About, I think some guy just said it once because I, I, I may have... One of the older kids thought I was being stupid and said, oh, what are you, Dizzy? And then they started calling me Diz the Wiz. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was another one? Uh, did you get did you get hit growing up? Did you get beat up? Beat up? Yeah. Like, was it I mean, tough? Was Queens tough? You know, I mean, it wasn't, you know, I'm not going to make like I, it was one of those tough neighborhoods where we, uh, we got in fights every day but I got held up twice at um, at gunpoint in the gas station I worked at Jeez. I, yeah when I was um, I guess I was 19, 20 I worked pumping gas uh, in Yellowstone Boulevard in Queens and two separate times yeah I, I got held up two so guys you, you give the person cash? Yeah, this is when it was all. You this know. is all cash. That, well, that, it wasn't all cash. There was credit cards, but you had to take the credit card going, kinking, and you yeah, know, yeah, uh, it wasn't automated at the pump, you know. Yeah. And there was a kid who came in, and a young guy pretended he needed to use the payphone. This is when there were payphones. Oh my gosh! And it was just me and this other guy working there, young guy working, and we just running out, coming in, and and he kept pretending the phone was busy. Yeah. He kept, Damn, uh, you know, and he looked, he was a young kid, looked like a college kid. We we, ne- we never suspected it, you yeah. know, and we started talking with him, laughing and whatever, and he was waiting for the right time, you know, because yeah. cars kept coming in, cars kept coming in, and at the right moment when there was a lull, he pulled out a gun. He had a gun in his, he goes, guys, I like you, don't do anything. Oh my gosh. Lay down. Yeah, and we, we, we let him take all the cash and he left, and the second time was a guy in I like. That's my agent calling. Oh my gosh. Let me close it. <clears throat> Second time was the guy in the car. Um, there was two guys in a car, one in the front seat and one in the back seat. I should have known right then. You know, one guy was one in the, the front, front, one in the back. Yes. And it was at night when we, and you have a sign that says, we, we don't make change. Yeah. Because we want to let them know we don't have money on us. Yeah. Know? And the guy in the front said, uh, I want three. This is how long ago it was. He wants three dollars of gas. Yeah. He goes, he only has a ten dollar bill. Yeah. And I said, All right, I'll give it to you. And I pumped the gas. 
He, he gets the 10. He hands me the 10. And I take out a wad of money. It's all singles, but yeah. it looks like yeah, it looks a like lot. looks like a lot of money. Which was good. And, I go, <laughs> and then I hear from the back seat, uh, yo. And as soon as, as soon as I heard yo, I went, oh, no. Oh, gosh. And I looked, and he, he had a gun pointing out the window. And um, he said, give me all that. Throw it in. And I threw it in. And he goes, empty your pockets, too. And I, 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 I take out my wallet. And he goes, throw that in here. And I know I was scared. I'm not saying I'm a brave guy, but <laughs> I, I was scared. I know where this is going. <laughs> but I, I said to him, um, and I showed him what was in the wallet. It was only a dollar. I go, can I give you the dollar, but I want to keep my license and oh my whatever? Gosh. And the guy took the dollar, and he goes, yeah, you can keep that too. He, gave, he let me keep the wallet and let me keep my dollar. <laughs> and then they drove off. I knew exactly where you were going that story because the moment you said, give me your wallet, I... I, in my mind, it became my wallet. Yes, and, and then like, I got to oh, renew my license. The license gotta, and the this <laughs> and the that yeah, yeah. and yeah. the social security card. And then my mother made me quit. My mother <laughs> made me quit the gas station after the second time. We're, but, we're, you know, we were, it was a, e- not a bad t- neighborhood. It wasn't that bad a neighborhood. Yeah. You got held up at gunpoint twice. Yeah. I mean... Well, you're, you're, but, trying yeah. down, you're trying to downplay yeah, a bad know, neighborhood? That, that's mean, not a good neighborhood. It wasn't like it was, you know. It wasn't uh, Main Street. No, it wasn't Main Street. The, uh, th- that's, that's wild, though. Did, when they held a gun to you, yeah. were you, do you have the, 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 was fear oddly, of, the, the fear of God in you? You know, the first guy, I, I, he was the guy we, we were talking to him for an hour yeah and, and so we didn't have a sense that this is a crazy man who's, yeah who, who may you know you got to be careful um so i just said let's just do what he says you know yeah and the, and the second time and he also said i like you yes he said i, I like, like that I like that's a guys. nice touch i like you guys don't do anything you know yeah the second time was a little scarier because it was a little more dicey, you know. There's a guy sticking a gun out of the right. car, back, you know. Something about the yeah. backseat's a little menacing. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, once they saw the wad, of, you know, they they, yeah. they were not disappointed. Yeah, uh, I had a wad of singles. I I think when once they drove away, they realized this is nineteen dollars. You know, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. What can you? Oh my gosh! This, this was so obvious for you. I always ask people. Can you think of a moment in your life that changed your life, but you didn't know it at the time. You probably have like I can I probably name it. five of them for you. That I didn't know it at the yeah. time. You didn't know at the time it was going to change your life, and then it did. Well, I mean, career-wise, it's it's uh, Letterman. Yeah, you know, doing Letterman. Yeah, because uh, I just thought it was going to be a great spot. I mean, doing Letterman is a it could change your just having a good spot on Letterman could help your career. You yeah, know? no, I had the same but, thing. But does it lead to a TV show? Yeah, you know? yeah. I, on a very micro level, I had the same thing. You had a great Letterman. I had a good Letterman, set, and then I got to tw- right. I did be get to be a headliner. Right, Twenty four right. years old, I get to be. What year did you do Letterman? Two two thousand two, I think. Oh wow! So it was like yeah. it completely changed everything. Yeah, and 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 then you because I because for me it's like once you get to do an hour. Yeah. You can work out an hour. Yeah. And for you, obviously, it's series, your whole life. Yeah. Super, I mean, I, super I, listen, I did get to, to, to do Carson also right before he retired. I did it in 91. The thing was, at that point, it wasn't like doing Carson in the late 70s yeah. where you became a, an instant, almost household name yeah. headliner. Yeah. Overnight. You know, it was still the pinnacle for a comedian. Yeah. It was the dream. Yeah. You know, me and my brother, me, not me and my brother, me and my friend one day in the kitchen, my brother was in the other room. We were the funny guy, you know, whatever we thought. And and I think we had been drinking a little bit. And my older brother, we, we were busting his chops, you know, and we said, and he was telling us to shut up, whatever, inside, you know, we were being stupid. And then we just said, we're going to be on Carson. Oh, my gosh. And he goes, <laughs> He goes, you're not going to be on Carson. I go, within within five years, we're wow. going to be on Carson. You know, It took probably 20, yeah. 15, 20 years, and it was just me. Yeah, yeah, Carson. yeah. <laughs> but, but, we, but we did throw that out there. Uh, so, yeah. It was funny. Uh, I think we might have made a bet. We might have bet him that, like, in five years, we'll bet you $100, we'll be on Carson. You, you, had, the, you had the existence of an archetype that comedians wanted 
for like 20 years have followed it. Like, which is you went to Montreal just for laughs. You did new faces. You did Letterman. And then from Letterman, you got to deal with Letterman's company to do a sitcom and the sitcom's a hit. And it's, and from that point on, every manager and agent was like, go to Montreal, create a comedy set that's about your life. And yeah. it becomes a second. And even I had, even I had that where they, I did new faces and I did Letterman, and they tried to build a, a sitcom around my life. And then I realized like this doesn't feel right, and I right. kind of walked away from it and did what I did. Did you have a Letterman <clears throat> development deal? It wasn't with that company, oh. Oh. but it was with it was with CBS. Oh, okay. I had a CBS yeah. pilot they shot right, based right. on my life, Mike Birbiglia project, whatever it was. And then it was like, but it was weird because. I feel like your your show had artistic integrity. They did not let our show have artistic integrity. Yeah. Like by the time we finished the pilot, it didn't feel like me at all. Yeah. But yours did. It's like how'd you do that? Yeah, we had to fight for stuff too. I mean, they wanted to take it out of the city. Oh. They wanted yeah, they really they they, they felt like we we have to appeal to middle America. Wow. And that's why we gave them long. We we compromised and gave them Long Island. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Otherwise, we wanted it to be in Queens or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they said it won't appeal to middle. Meantime, at the time, Seinfeld was the number New one York show. New York City. Yeah, yeah. The number one show yeah. ever. Yeah. They wanted the wife to be a little more, uh, you know, un unethnic. You know. Yeah. I've heard Phil Rosenthal talk about yeah. this, your partner. Yeah. Talk about also like, we need someone who's like super hot to be the wife yeah. and all that stuff. And it's like, they gave us that, they were giving us that note yeah. at the network. And we were like, no, 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 it's supposed to be funny. Yeah. It's not about who's the, it's not a modeling right, right. contest. This is insane. Yeah. Yeah. How about when Phil went to, uh, to Russia and brought the show to yes. Russia? And they wanted the, the wife has to be glamorous, dressed, yes, dressed to the nines every day. And yes, she's she's a housewife. She's doing laundry. You know, there's a little story to that Letterman spot. So this is the spot that got your I, show I'm here. This yeah, is yeah. why I'm here. <laughs> why you're here yeah. on this podcast. So it's my first Letterman. I'm backstage, and um, I'm watching the show. And Dave is doing a bit about can we cut your pants into shorts? Mm. And his first guess is Mel Gibson, and he and because it's kind of it's May maybe, so you know uh, summer is coming, and he he's going to summarize everybody's pants, and he cuts Mel Gibson's pants into shorts, you know, right out there. You know Mel, Mel wasn't expecting it, and the crowd goes nuts. Yeah, and then. He he goes, Paul, you got to have your, and he cuts Paul Schaefer's pants. Yeah. Anyway. And then he goes, I, you know, I'm, and I got to be a good sport. Uh, I'm doing a few, and he cuts his own pants into shorts. Yeah. So I'm backstage, and we're all thinking. I go, should I go uh -huh. out with? <laughs> should I go out with cut pants? <laughs> Like go out, right, ladies and gentlemen, Ray Romano, and walk out, and my pants are already <laughs> cut. And the producer brought back scissors, and he goes, "You got, you got to go, you got to go out with that. You got to cut your pants off." Oh, that's and I was so like, funny. and we had the scissors, and I was, yeah, I guess. And at the last minute, I rethought it. <laughs> well, because I said, I thought <laughs> it might get a laugh, but this, this is, a, I'm an, I'm, I'm an unknown. Yeah, and I'm walking out. Yeah, and it. It's a little distracting. Yeah, there's an initial, but it's also like you're not part of the club. Yet. Yeah, you're not part of the club. Yeah, and I and I made the choice not to do it. Now listen, I had a great set. Even in my, I'm, I'm hard on myself. That that set was really good. It, it led to this, and I told Dave this at the very end. I go, and I think if I came out with those pants, I don't know if this happens. You I know? agree. You think so? He, yes, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I think that. I think if you cut off the pants, the dynamic changes. The I think all changes. of a sudden, it's the night that's about the pants, right? And it's not about oh, this new voice in comedy, right? It's a guy who's it's, kind of yes ending thing. the bit. It's a little thing, but you don't know how it it snowballs. I think the butterfly effect is not there. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I think that's a smart move. Also, you ever hear the phrase "Don't you can't follow the costume." No. I think that's a super smart 
Yeah. I don't know who invented this phrase, but it's it's a, such a smart point, which is like if you come right. on in a silly outfit, a big outfit, you wear, you know, a yeah. chicken suit or whatever, it's funny for yeah. a minute. Yes, yes. And then you got to do something. <laughs> you know what's funny? Sometimes you'll say, you and I will be back to back in the cellar and you'll be like, you'll be like, oh, great, I got to follow. Yeah, married stuff. Married yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. <laughs> with more married stuff. Is there anything that you feel like you can't follow for real? At the cellar, the funny thing about the cellar is I'm always, first of all, I'm, I don't care how long I've been in this business. I'm always nervous about, about following whoever's up there. Yeah. I just did Vegas for the first time with Brian Regan. You know, yeah. Funny, oh, yeah. Funny, funniest guy. Crushes. Ever. Right. And he went on before me he only did 25 minutes and then i had to go up and do like 35 40 minutes and i was out in the in the audience we've never worked together at yeah. vegas we've worked together back in the day and i was sitting there panicking i was like yeah Shit. what's gonna happen but then you ultimately learn first of all it's it's a little easier now because people know who you are yeah but back in the day when when you were just this guy following this guy yeah. um but 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 the cellar is a great room where you can if you bring your own energy on that stage they even if a guy's before you who yeah. crushes and is wild and weird I think they I think they adjust to your energy you yeah know? not every I don't think every room is like that yeah I think the cellar is um, um, so I'm not worried about I'm still nervous when a guy you know is rocking it and killing it yeah. Before me. But I, I just have to keep reminding myself, just don't don't try to match that energy. Don't yeah. try to come out, you know, bring them into your energy, you know, and and take your time, you know. Um, but it ha but in my career, I've had trouble following guys, you know. I used to follow, I used to not I used to be scared following um, Manfalati and um, Alan Havy. You know Alan Havy? Yeah, of course. He's one of the. He's a great comic. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was like, oh no, I got to follow him. David Tell, I used to follow. Tell's hard to follow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> um, but but it's subject matter. Like with you, it's it's subject matter. Yeah. Like I saw Paul Reiser at the at um, the Comedy Magic Club the other not the other night, but it was a, a couple years ago, and I was like, you and I cannot work together. That's funny. Yeah, because he's he's he, hitting the same stuff. Yeah, we're talking about relationships, marriage, wife, wife, yeah. the, wife hates us, the whole thing. <laughs> wife mm. hates us, the whole mm. thing. <laughs> The <laughs> can I tell you what my wife did this week? Oh yeah, Vegas, please in Vegas please. this weekend. So she came to Vegas, and John Manfalotti was is opening for me. Did I tell you? I didn't tell this. No, story. no. Okay. We have a, a suite with two bedrooms. You know, where me and my wife are in this bedroom, and John Manfalotti is in this one. We all he's a good friend, you know. And in the morning, one morning, I go into his bedroom. I'm talking to him. I come out. My wife sees us come out. Sees me come out. She goes, "What are you doing in there?" And John is a comedian. He just said, uh, "We made love." And my wife looks at him and goes, "Thank you." <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> She's like, "Yep." Yeah. And that's 35 years of marriage. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I have a new. I have a new bit about marriage, which is that that I've been working on, which is like. Uh, in marriage, I think the the most special thing is that you can communicate so much with so few words. <laughs> yes. Like a friend of mine was like, I want to go skydiving and I want you to come. And I was like, oh, that sounds great. I went home to my wife. I relayed this. And she said, you going to do that? And that's when I realized I wasn't going to do that. <laughs> I said, no, no. And that's when I told him, no, yeah. I'm not interested in that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. the end of it is because I'm more afraid of my wife's judgment of me than I am of jumping out of an airplane at 30,000 <laughs> feet. That's funny. Yeah, no, I'm uh, right. I feel like I'm in that space right now where I'm trying to, like when I'm writing new material, it's like 80 to 90% of my life is spent with my wife and daughter. Yeah. And it's like, what am I going to write about? Yeah, that's it for me, man. <laughs> Same with me. And, and of course, and Jenny's a poet. And so a lot of, look, when I wrote the last show, the new one, about having a child, like I used her poetry in it, and uh -huh. so she was a writer on it, and yeah, so it yeah, was yeah. less. <laughs> there was less 
uh, it's just a less challenging thing because ultimately, like her words are her words. Like yeah. she expressed it with this, you know. Right, I'd right. say the poem, but um, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it's tricky because <clears throat> I think auto doing autobiographical writing about relationships, marriage, whatever it is, is challenging because ultimately, comedy is based on conflict. Yes, films are based on conflict. I mean, your whole film is based on yeah. conflict. Yeah, it's funny. People used to say about everybody loves Raymond. Why are they always fighting? <laughs> and yeah, the answer. Well, what do you do? You want us to just be sitting on the couch, getting along? Yeah. And then what episode is that? What? Tell me what's what's that episode about? You know? Yeah, it's conflict. And my wife. Um, uh, we I got COVID for the first time a month, two months ago, and it was at a birth. I was on a Two days before her birthday, she was turning 60. And we planned a big party in a restaurant here in New York. You know, we rented out a restaurant floor or whatever. And now I can't go, right? And, and she's she's going to the elevator in our apartment. And I'm standing in the doorway in my pajamas. You know, and I, just as she's before she gets in the elevator, she turns and I wave. And I go, happy birthday. And thinking maybe... She'll say, you know, we're going to miss you, you know, hope you feel better. And she just looks at me and goes, I feel like punching you. Oh, my gosh. Jesus. <laughs> oh, my gosh. She's blaming me for that. Because she knew that there was probably a little bit of me that liked that I didn't have to go. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> funny. Yeah. That's the thing but, about marriage is that, that yeah. is worth writing about is that you're so close to somebody that actually they can read your mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and in some ways, that's that's what makes the dramatic element, I think, worth watching. Even in the movie, the relationship between your character and Laurie Metcalf's character is very deep. But part of what makes it deep is the conflict. Right, right. The characters are in conflict with each other, like, quite a bit. Right. And, <clears throat> and, and, and we also wanted to write it with, you know coming from people who don't can't articulate much like oh that's that. interesting don't yeah say it that much you know yeah they're not in couples yeah. therapy or anything no, no yeah no so you know you know she's struggling with her fear of of dying cancer yeah you know, yeah cancer and they don't know you know he doesn't really know how to uh, deal with that and process it you know but he says it in the best way he can you know just like the father says, he gives finally gives the kid a guy a compliment, but yeah. it's on his back, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't, you can't even do it face to face. It's interesting because if you think about like conflict in movies or jokes or whatever, it's like, in some ways, it indicates that the people care about each other at all. That they don't. <laughs> that they yeah. do. That they yeah. that they care about each other at all. Like right. when I'm watching somewhere in Queens. Yeah. And your your character and Laurie Metcalf's character are arguing the way they are. I'm like, yeah, that's a marriage. You're like, oh, they love each other. Yeah, yeah they love each <laughs> other. <laughs> that's funny. They're going to be there for each other. Honestly, if I was watching the movie and they're indifferent, yeah, and they're like, I'm not there. Yeah, well, that was the key for everybody. Was Raymond is, yeah, yeah, they, yes, they yell and scream every episode. Isn't that? But you know that they love each other. You know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you ever have rules for how to make sure that that's expressed with Ray with Raymond? Like, did you ever have a, we, we did you ever have a tip a, over thing where you're like, "This is too much, too much arguing"? I'm sure we did, but we always had. I think, I think you know, we wanted to always get somewhere, you know. So yeah, they're gonna yell and scream, and I'm gonna do something horrible and stupid and whatever. But there's gonna be a, a, a within those 22 minutes. There's going to be an arc, and you're going to, he's going to learn something, somebody's going to learn something, you know, subtly. It's not going to be pushed in, in your face, and it's not yeah. going to be, uh, we're not going to be preaching to anybody. But but always something, you know, yeah. a little bit of something, you know. And I think that's why people stuck with it, is because, it, yes, we attack each other, but, but I think they felt, you, you give them just... You just give them a, a little taste of sweetness and love, and then you can, 
Yes. It goes a long way, you know? Yeah. I did. I remember the father. There was an episode where uh, Peter Boyle uh, did something with a baseball. He, I don't know what it was, but I remember uh, Phil wanted me to kiss him on the head. Yeah. And I said, Phil, no, no, it would never. The character would never, and we, when Phil and I never really came to odds at anything. Never. Yeah. You know, we would always discuss and this and that, and there were maybe one or two times where we strongly disagreed. <laughs> you know, Phil's thing in the writer's room was whenever I would say, no, no, my character wouldn't do it. Yeah. Do that. He would say, yes, but that's why you do it. Because your character <laughs> wouldn't do it. And I said, okay, I can never. Wait, what's his logic? That's why you do it because yes. he wouldn't do yes, it? Yes, yes. He thought that was what was good about it was we don't think he would do it. I go, I guess I can never argue a point then. If, if, if the reason I do it is because I wouldn't do it, then uh, I guess uh, anything you put down, I, I have to do. But he just did it at this one moment. It was funny. I, 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 I always uh, call him on that. But, but in this part, he, see, he, he wanted me to kiss Peter Boyle on the head at this sweet moment. And I thought it was too much for th these two guys, you know. And uh, so he said to me, he goes, and we were going back and forth, back and forth. And it, was, it, it wasn't loud or, con you know. Um, and he finally said to me, just do the scene. And if you feel it, do it. Yeah. If you feel it, do it. Which yeah. He was very smart. That is smart. He knew I was yeah, going to yeah. do it. <laughs> and I did. I oh, did that's it. nice. Yeah. And it was, you know, the audience loved it. And, yeah. But but then the, oh, so then the follow-up joke to that is, is and we'll end on this idea, is, um, and I go, so so she makes me pancake. And I go, thank you for pancake. And then I, <laughs> and then I, I wanted to do something nice for her because my love language is keeping score. And, and then what I do at the, in the, the crowd is because usually literally someone claps and i go if you're clapping wait, wait about keeping score yeah yeah yeah. Uh, i go if you're la if you're clapping it's because you're you're keeping score and if you're yeah. not and if you're not clapping you're keeping score and you're losing that's funny that's i i this is not we're not doing the same bit no 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 but, no but i do the i do a thing about scoring points oh you do life. you same thing not the same similar thing, yeah but I, I i say i just bring it up like the other day I scored points with my wife mm. and and ladies you know we, we're always trying to score points and, and and every guy is trying to score points I don't know what game we're in with you yes but, <laughs> but you have the lead uh, I say we are like the Washington Generals you know the Harlem Globetrotters play the, oh the team gosh. the Harlem Globetrotters play yeah that's a great take yeah. So one yeah, of my yours is 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 different. It's funny. Oh no, yeah, yeah, of yeah. course. No. Yeah. And one of my one of mine that that yours reminds me of is I go uh, I go. It's marriage is teamwork, and we've lost a lot of games. Yeah, <laughs> we're in a slump. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, and that's sometimes at the end of the of the game, I'm like, I was under the hoop for an hour. Yeah. And, she, and she's like, you couldn't score if you had a ladder and no defense. I was open. I was, I was open. open all games, yeah. That's great, though. Your your take is actually more filled out than mine, which is this idea that, like, that like you're basically, that you're keeping score because you kind of know the other person's winning. Because they they're always in the, yes. They're in the lead already. Yes. That's interesting. Yes. We, we always need points because we're behind. We're always behind on points. But it's funny because yeah. I think the reason people are clapping, why that yes. keeping score thing gets a reaction, is I think sometimes people, there's no outlet for, and this is the same reason everyone loves Raymond connects with people. It's like, there's no outlet for people to be like, this is, this dynamic of marriage and relationships and living together for your whole life, and it's your lover, and it's your, your it's the mother of your child, and it's your wife, and it's blah, blah, your roommate. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's so complex that if you can put words to it with yes. an analogy or any anything, there's no outlet for people to uh, share um, what's the the stuff that's hard, the stuff that's wrong about it. You know, the stuff that's hard about it. You yeah, know? you know, for people to to uh, bond over. Yes, yes, that's that. I go through that same shit. Yes. You know. Yes. You know? Yeah, you can't complain to your, you know, it's, you don't want to complain to the her about it. <laughs> no. So you want to see other people talking about it. And yeah. Say, Fuck, I go through the same thing. 
Yeah. Like I do a bit, and this is this happened. This is what happened. I think you, you must have heard this. We were having dinner uh, with my son and his girlfriend, just me and my wife, at our house. And in the middle of it, I got a text, and it was from my wife. Mm-hmm. It was right there. And it was just two words, chewing loud. <laughs> yes. And, and, and chewing loud. And I, that happened to me. I wrote it out, and I took it on stage, and I just said it, and it got a huge laugh. And I, I, I your wife, it was basically your wife commenting on the... You. Talking to me, you. yes. Yeah. Yes, chewing loud. <laughs> chewing yeah, loud. Yeah. But, but I'm saying I thought I was... I need to write a punchline here, and no, the, no, that's every- it. The last thing we do is we call it working out for a cause. If there's an organization, like a nonprofit or anything that you donate to or anything, we we donate to them, and they li- we link in the show notes to them. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah, I mean we we have a couple, but uh, the main one we go to is Harvest Home. It's called Harvest Home. It's in. It's in L.A., and it's a nice organization that takes women who are pregnant, who are find themselves either to be homeless or just out of work, and it helps them, you know, it takes them in and helps them have, you know, puts them on their feet and helps them have their baby and get, get them work and a job and all that. Yeah, so we'll link to harvesthome.org and... Um, and Ray, thanks for coming on. This is just all a, right. a phenomenal. You're, you're uh, going to yeah, edit it, right? We gotta, yeah, we're going to edit it. We're going to yeah. tighten it up. All right. Thanks, Ray. All right, man. <laughs> fix it in post. Fix it in post. We'll fix it in post.